Hello guys, welcome along, thanks for tuning in. Here we are today with uh, part 7 of my um, Lancaster upgrades. This is my upgrades. Um, I try and keep my upgrades and the aftermarket upgrades as two separate things, two separate entities. Um, so today we're going to look at the undercarriage bays and associated areas. And I'm going to concentrate on the port wing. This is the scarboard wing finish. It's a bit of a, a, a weird layout. You can see you've got the instructions in front of you here. Um, so you've got the engines here with the engine bearers and everything. And then you're into the the uh, undercarriage wheels. And then you're into doing these oil tanks and putting them in the outboard engine bearers. And then you come over the page and you're into assembling the main undercarriage. And then you're into the outboard engines again. Um, and then you put the engine covers on. And then you're into building up the inboard engine pods with the oil tank and everything and the main undercarriage bay. And then you're back up to putting the en engine together with the outer covers on before you even attach it to this. And then you're building this up. This is with the um, undercarriage up. So you have the doors closed. Uh, under undercarriage doors open. You have to cut some bits out here. Um, and then you're sort of adding the undercarriage in and then putting the, the two halves together. Um, I've had a quick look at the parts and I think basically the, the probably the best way to build this I think is to actually assemble all of this and fit it to the wing and the same on the outboard engine here um, and then put the engine pods on afterwards that way you can make sure the engines are all lined up and square and everything uh, rather than doing it this way I could be wrong um, but yeah, I'm concentrating on the port wing now and just to let you know from my last video, if you remember all the fuss, um, I managed to get a, a, a pretty decent joint, if you can catch that in the light, um, looks a bit uneven because of the, the white sanding dust in there, but and we've got some fine scratch marks there, but they are literally, they won't show you after a cut of primer. So, um, yeah, I got the joint there. Um, so yeah, none of the riveting has disappeared. I just what, what I basically did this is what I always do rather than have to re-rivet what I do is I deepen the rivet that's already there and then sand away um, that way you're not worried about pitch or position or straight lines or anything um, same with scribe line scribe the line scribe the line heavily sand away if it starts to disappear scribe it again and as you can see if you remember I had that massive mismatch at the front of the wingtip well it's all it's, it's gone now um, but as one of my uh, one of my watchers commented anyway, he said like you know the wing tip is a separate bolted on item, um, but also the outer wing in as well. It's bolted here, and this you can see depicted by these um, two panel lines here. This is actually a fairing in the middle. I'm not sure if it should have that crease in the middle or not. I'm not sure if it should be straight. But um, yeah, that when you actually take that fairing off, you see the outer wing is just you can see all the bolts going through. It's like a like an interconnecting lattice where the wing bolts on. Um, so that's the uh, that's the port wing done. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to say. What I did discover when I started to drill the bottom of these buckets that I cut out for the landing lights, uh, I noticed that the, the bottom was extremely thin. So if I can get the camera to look down in there, you can see I've just glued a piece of one and a half mil plastic card in there. Um, and then reshape the, the bottom of the bowl again and then drill through where I could put the bulbs in. Um, I still haven't found what I'm going to put in there yet to um, to replicate the lenses. Um, somebody suggested about using the aftermarket lenses you get for trains and stuff. Um, I could use them. Um, I've got them, they only got up to 5mm, but to be honest I'd rather have the clear with the bulb inside there. Being this is so old, you, you kind of... If you look at an old Harley Davidson headlamp, it's very similar. You've got that sort of bulb. You can see it's like an empty glass opening, if you like, with a bulb in it. So that's that's the sort of look I'm after. So um, so that's the wing. This is the port wing. And uh, as you remember, there's the there's the rescribed detail and re-riveted detail over where the uh, dinghy port was. So <clears throat> we've got a flicker. Get rid of that. Sorry, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. So moving on to these um, undercarriage bays, there's a, a couple of issues um, with the design of the kit and I don't really know 
why they've done it that way. So um, let's get the parts and uh, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here are the parts. These are all the parts for the port main landing gear. Um, I'll go through a few issues first. Uh, firstly, I'm not sure if there should be any tire lettering on these. Please let me know in the comments below. Um, so we've got a, a pretty complete main undercarriage bay. We've got the, the ribbing here, which would replicate the, the upper surface of the wing. Um, we've got the ribbing here that goes through the undercarriage bay. We've got the two bulkheads, front and rear. Um, this little one here, this pops in between the undercarriage legs. Um, sorry, not the undercarriage legs. The um, main support beams, the undercarriage support beams here, which actually they bolt to the front leading edge, the main spar. Um, and they support the engines and the actual main landing gear, as you can see. Uh, if you want to see them in real life, go onto YouTube and look for Jess Jane restoration videos. There's loads on there and you'll see lots and lots of times they talk about these they're forged or cast aluminium um, huge beams in fact they may even be magnesium um, and they have to keep going off for NDT testing and, and, and stuff to check for cracks so uh, apparently uh, Just Jane has been lucky and I think all four have been checked now and they're all absolutely fine apparently in Canada they found a lot with cracks in so so lucky old girl um, so yeah we've got the main undercarriage legs we've got the oil tank there these are the beams that go between the main undercarriage legs and then we've got here I think this is depicting these just go in here I think they're depicting uh, part of the um, engine supports so first things first um, if you look at the Revell kit if you watch my channel you know I'm building this one this is the Revell 172nd scale and you can see that when you look up in the main undercarriage bay you can see this um, lattice work that's the actual wing spar framing um, and it should be hollow so basically what HK have done is molded it as a solid piece um, and we can see that it should be hollow because I've got a book here this is the wonderful Avro Lancaster uh, Manchester and Lincoln by um, Sam Publications the ISBN number is there if you want to look this book up so there you go um, and we can see here it's, uh, one thing I would say don't rely on the drawings in this book um, that's all I'm saying um, but yeah we got the you can see here this is the main this is if you can imagine here we've got the fuselage and then this is the wing section this is the inboard engine the engine would mount on here and the, the, you, if you look closely you can see the tire inside there that's the main landing gear bay here's those big engine support beams i was talking about these pieces here that's them there um, there's the oil tank there you can see here and then you can see here this is this spar and you you can see that it's hollow through there and there's another picture over here there we go another one here and you can actually see if you look closely you can see the tire through there so um, it's probably worth opening them up and then painting the inside of the wing green um, and then the main undercarriage bay will be black so it sort of you know gives it some some interest up in the undercarriage bay if you want to go that far if not you know don't bother um, but I'm going to do it uh, so and while, I, while I'm on the subject like I say don't trust the drawings um, what did I see in here for example here we go of that wing one sorry flicker one landing light um, not sure that's quite accurate and there's another couple of issues as well which I can't remember now uh, but there are some drawings in here that actually show two dinghy ports as well so um, yeah be a bit careful of that um, so there's a few but it's, it's a very very good book it's got lots and lots of photographs lots of good reference shots um, and it also covers the the b2 and it covers the um, Manchester and the Lincoln as well so and it gives you all the different variants and stuff I did do a complete review on this book so have a look back and uh, and you'll see what I've done um, so yeah so obviously these areas here that I've hatched up they need to be opened up so I'll show you how I do that in a minute 
We've also got pretty common with the whole kit really. Absolutely plastered and injector pin marks. Um, most of them are proud. I think one or two are slightly shallow. They may sand out. I may need to put a bit of fur in them. But um, what I've done, I've rubbed over them with pencil as you can see. And then when you sand them, what you do, that's fine one that's definitely raised. What you do when you sand them, you will notice that the straight away the pencil is rubbed off of the ejector pin mark and remains on the plastic around it. So because the ejector pin mark is raised, I'll just keep sanding until it all the pencil disappears and then I know I'm sort of blending out pretty much smooth then. If you've got one that's shallow, like I think that one there is, what you'll find is when you sand, yeah there we go, when you sand you'll see the pencil stays in the injector pin mark but it's gone from the surrounding area. So in that case, you would sand until the injector pin disappears. And um, I'm not trying to teach you how to suck eggs if you're a if you're an experienced modeler, but um, you know there's some guys out there that that aren't experienced modelers and don't really know how to deal with this sort of stuff. So I have to try and cater for everyone on this channel, which is um, my sole intention, and um, which is why I'm starting to build along very very soon. Um, if you look back on my videos I think two days ago I put a video up it's called the decision is almost made you can get on there join in the build along and choose which kit you want to do um, got a choice of a Junkers 88 or a, um, a tornado so you can uh, make your mind up at the moment the Junkers 88 is way out in front so unless about 15 tornado fans come along today then the uh, it's going to be the Uncas 88. It all finishes later on this afternoon. So um, today being Wednesday, Wednesday the 12th, Wednesday the 12th, Wednesday the 13th of March 2019. So uh, there we go. So you can see now, I've just rubbed that one away. All the pencils disappeared. So that's that ejector pin pretty much gone. But yeah, actually, no, there is a line still left there. So I'm just going to sand a little bit more. I mean, to be honest, these are deep up inside the undercarriage bay. It'd be really hard to push to see them if there's a slight witness left. But, uh, you know, if you're going to do it, you may as well do it right. Eh? So that's um, that's one issue there. Uh, another issue is with the undercarriage. This beam here shouldn't be there. Um, this is a, I believe it's post-war. Um, but basically when the when the aircraft is sat on its undercarriage they put this beam in and it prevents the um, undercarriage from collapsing or being attracted from the cockpit Let's see if I can find your photograph um, here we go we can see them there see those red beams that's them and unfortunately um, HK have included them in their kit uh, so <laughs> They need to be removed um, if you're doing a wartime bird that sort of stood ready for uh, ready for a mission or something. I mean, mine is a um, is a dam buster, so um, yeah. So there we go. Um, I think I've covered everything there. Uh, oh, just one other thing before I carry on. This undercarriage looks to be fairly strong and more than capable of supporting the weight of the model. If you would like to see brass undercarriage marketed for this kit, would you please let me know in the comments below? If there's enough interest, um, I can speak to a manufacturer and get them to make brass undercarriage. I will have to give them my parts to, to copy um, or, or use for their measurements or whatever, but it won't be cheap because the thing is with undercarriage, as I'm sure you're aware, with any any componentry any in any walk of life um, obviously if this was a phantom nose gear you could make it in one piece so it's a one piece casting therefore it's one bang in the mold or in the die job done so then that undercarriage leg comes out at I don't know eight pounds say this one would be one two three four five parts and I would suggest that this part would still be used plastic. Um, 
so you'd have the main the two main uprights and then these three center supports um, so it could be that this undercarriage set would be probably 25 to 35 pounds so let me know in the comments below what you think um, they would be brass they would be very very strong just like the ones you've seen me review on the b24 and the tornado and the phantom um, so yeah let me know in the comments below if you would like to see brass undercarriage legs made then uh, we, we can look into it so um Anyway, I'm going to get some work done on here and I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to cut all this out and sand it all smooth. So I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so we've got the um, fuel tank assembled. We've got the wheel glued together and I've had to put some um, Mr. Surfacer in the sprue where the sprue connection points were. Um, so leave them for a while to go hard and then rub out the seam. Uh, got rid of all the ejector pin marks in these um, panels here. As you can see, there's three there that are just shallow. Uh, this one was actually quite deep, this one here. So um, just filled them in. Uh, as I say, you know, when you actually look down into the into the main gear bay like so, you know, you're not really going to see them. But uh, it is a 400 pound model after all. Let's, um, you know, let's, let's get it right. There's also um, something else worth noting for our newer modelers um, where a lot of these location holes are where bulkheads go in for example like that um, a lot of these are raised there's kind of a raised rim around them they need to be sanded off you know just a, a very quick I use these floury skinny sanders the green ones are the most popular for me they're the, the, the most use and just you know just a quick just a very quick rub over like that just to get rid of that raised area you can just see it on these here there's like a raised patch around and again the beauty is with these skinny sticks you can get between those ribs and just just rub it out sorry i'm off camera just rub it out like so um now you guys might want to sit down for this because i'm going to praise this model uh something has just dawned on me um the sprue connection points on this kit are wonderful if you take for example this part here all the sprue connection points are on the end of the tabs so you just nip it off the sprue sand them down no problem um, same on here all on the tabs on these brackets all the sprue connection points are on the ends where the where the um, where you're going to glue them so there's no sprue connection points in the side of the parts so you haven't got to start you know taking the um, the, the nib off and then trying to re, you know remake the round shape and everything um same on these on the tabs um and also the other thing with these they've molded them the the edge of the mold tool is the edge of the part so there's no seam down the middle to be rubbed out uh, there were ejector pin marks on here i forgot to um, mention earlier there to be rubbed out but they were all very slightly proud so just rubbed out easily and they're all uh, as you can see they're all gone um yeah, I mean the same with all these, um, you know, undercarriage support parts, all the sprue connection points on the ends. So um, yeah, HK, thanks for that. Um, brilliant, really, really good job. Um, and also the other thing that's nice to see with um, areas like this here, the actual sprue connection point is on the mating face. And I like that so it doesn't destroy the detail on here. But then having said that, you can see that because they haven't used slide bolts, the riveting tends to fade away very uh, very much like old airfix kits so that's going to need to be re-established if, if you really want to um you can see here these these um these use fasteners here that security uh, panels on you can see it sort of fades away so um that's no big deal i mean that's a that's a common aircraft modeling issue um so we'll let this mr servicer go off and then uh, I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to cut these triangles out. Right, so have a look at how we're going to drill out these um, areas in here. And just to remind you, what I'm trying to achieve is is this kind of look, like you get with the the 70 second scale kits from Ravel and Airfix. I'm not sure what the Tamiya one does, but um, the Tamiya is the 48 scale. So um, what I'll do, I'll start on one end, I'll start on this end here. And what I'm doing, I'm putting a magic marker around and I'm making sure the magic marker goes right into the corner 
and this will all come clear in a minute. So I'll just do these three to start with. So what I've done, I've used the magic marker and I've made sure it's gone right into the corners. So there's no gaps. I don't want to do it like this, like that. You can see there it's missed out in the corner. It needs to go right in. You want it on that face. Right. I've got a couple of those. I've got a one millimeter drill in um in a tool. Let me just move this camera a bit better. Um and you can use any size drill, it doesn't have to be one millimeter. Um just be careful not to actually touch the sides. What you don't want to do is mark the, the bit we're leaving. So the area in here is what I'm drilling out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just going in here, staying away from the edge and going through. It's quite thin. As you can see, it doesn't take much to go through there. Now, to speed things up, a great little tool that's available, I think, on eBay. I don't, I'm not sure if it's available in the UK. But this is a, a Tamiya um, mini drill, and you buy it as a model kit. Look it up on eBay. It's just a little battery drill. Um, and it is literally a little motor, like a little, like you get in a, you know, in a, a small toy car or something, just one of those small, you know, not like a radio controlled motor, just a small motor. Um, and it's a drill, uh, and, and that's it. Um, and you can lock the, well, you can lock it so that you can, it doesn't work. And it's got a stop there, so you can actually lock the collet and tighten it up. Great little thing. It comes as a model kit. You make it yourself. There's even how to's on, on eBay, how to build them. So this makes life a lot easier, as you will see. Just push that through like that. And I'm just going to drill around here. Just drill a series of holes. And as I say, I'm making sure I don't touch the sides. I don't want to touch the... Um, the, the, the sort of size of the ribs because that's that's the bit that we want to keep. So there we go. I've drilled through there now. Let's just drill in there. Okay, and then I can take my knife, or actually, you can take my snips. I've got these Tamiya fine snips. I should be able to get in between these holes and just cut the plastic in between the holes until they get so I can break it out. like so. If you don't have these fine pointed cutters, what you can do is just put it on a flat table and with a knife, just cut through the little gaps in between the holes, like so. And there we go. That's easy enough, and then you just break that out, and now we've got that there. Now, what I can do now to make those edges look more apparent, I could just go over with a sanding stick and just remove the magic marker from the from the upper surface, and then I could just go around with my knife. In fact, what I should have done here was got a new blade. And now you can see why I put that black pen on there. Because you can, if I can get it to focus, you can see the black pen is on the side. Now, when I start cutting away the plastic, you can see the black is still there. So I know I've got some more to go. I can cut away that plastic until I just see a trace of the black. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Just gently cut away that plastic.
like so. Just to leave a small amount on the edge. And now we can take a sanding stick and I can go in here and start to clean it up. Or the other thing you could use is a small file. We've got a round file here. What I can do now is get in there with a file. And you can use a round file for flat edges. You just need to hold the file on an angle like this and then stroke it forwards and backwards. And make sure you don't go vertically up and down in the same place. Takes a bit of practice, takes a bit of getting used to, but um, it's not difficult. And if you see there, I've sanded away or filed away the black pen. Oh no, I haven't. It was dust. <laughs> So just keep filing away until the black pen starts to disappear and then I'm on the edge. Okay, so there you go. That's how we're going to do that. And yes, it takes a bit of time. But in my opinion, I think the end result is worth it. Because I think it's going to look a lot better when you look down inside that undercarriage bay and see the, see the wing. Um, I'm not sure if there should be any th fuel tanks or anything visible. I don't think there are. Um, I just have to check my references. And uh, that there's some oxygen tanks on the back of one side, I notice. But only on, only on the... What's that? I think it's on the starboard side. There's some oxygen tanks strapped to the outside of the... So you look in the engine bay, you see them on, on this side. So, uh, yeah, check your references, have a look at that. And this is what we started with. As you can see, we've got the blank on that side, marked out with pencil where I'm going to hatch out. And on this one, you can see it's all been cut out now. And uh, drilled and filed and everything. And I'll just show you once more how I do it. I'll start on this one here. Go around the sides. Push the pen into all the edges. Yeah, and just to clarify what I'm doing, I'm getting the pen in the corner. Okay, one other thing I am going to do that I didn't talk about before with a pretty worn sanding stick. Oh, this is what you get left with. So let's get that out of the way. With a pretty worn sanding stick, I'm just going to rub over so that the, the actual ink is only on the... Um, is only on the you know the uh, the perpendicular face the face that's 90 degrees to this one and then with my drill I can just come along and go around the outside like so leaving a thin wall of plastic between all of the holes Now I'm just going to get the cutters and just cut through the holes like so and then after I've done this the part will pop out then we've got a hole then I've actually changed though to this this blade here this is a number 11 Swan Morton Scalpel 
and it makes it a lot easier to get into the corners. I'm just going inside here and cutting away. Like so. I'm just carving away so I just have a line, a thin line of the black ink I can see there. Doesn't all need to be perfectly straight, but um, preferable to get rid of the edge of the drilled holes because next we're going to file. And what you don't want to do is have the file fall into a drilled hole and then you end up with a great gouge. Now I'm using three different files. I've got a round rat tail file, which is a tiny little thing here. There's some better light for you. Tiny little thing. And then I've got a um, it's flat on one side and radius on the other. It's not semicircular. It's um, and then this one is flat on one side and then angled on the other, as you can see there. So I'll start off with this one, which is the flat one, and then just go in and just file away until the black ink disappears. But not because I've rubbed it away, because it's underneath a load of dust. Like so. If I can stay in. Stay inside and keep all the black there. Using the round file now to get into that radius corner. And then again with the flat file, but staying away from that radius. So I put my finger behind and it stops me running into that. You don't want to run into that radius and put a groove in it. Just file up into those corners. And then when we're all pretty close, we can just try and make sure that everything stays nice and square. As you can see on that bottom edge, I'm getting very close. And you can see the ink starting to disappear. Do the same here. All of a sudden, the dust will go, the ink will reappear, and then the ink will be gone. I don't know if you've seen that. Or I don't know if you saw that. Should I say that's a bit of Bristolian coming out there? If you watch on this face here, see that white line of dust, all of a sudden the black will start to reappear and then before you know it, you go see the black has all come back, and before you know it, gone. And that's when you know when to stop, that's when you're on the edge. That was the whole purpose of putting the black ink on there. And then with this round one, I'm going to put it on an angle like this and then sand into the corner, I've got a nice radius on there, come back on an angle, don't ever sand like this, always on an angle, with the round file if you're on a flat surface because then you won't get any gouges in it. it takes a bit of practice but it's something you'll get used to. So straight like that in, in, when you're in a radius, let's do it this way on. Now this way on, sorry, and then as soon as I come down here, you can see I come on an angle, straight angle. And that way you won't make a gouge in. If you if you start to do this on the edge, you will actually go in and you'll make a, um, a radius actually in your flat, in your flat area. So if you just come along now, this one's a little bit finer. Go into the corner, get the knife again. Just scrape some of that plastic out of there. Obviously, when you're looking in this uh, this end under here, isn't as important as the rest of it, unless you're just very fussy. You like to do your work perfect, then more kudos to you. A lot of people say, "What's the point? You can't see it." 
for me, the whole thing about modelling is, um, is the enjoyment of actually doing it, not necessarily the end result. And then afterwards, if you just want to give it a clean up with a soft sponge, just stroke over it in all directions and it will just take the edges off. And then back, and it will just take the, the little bird up edges off. And if they're quite big, like they might be on the back here, just around with a knife and scrape them off. Obviously this side won't be seen at all because that'll be inside the wing, but you don't want the furry edges sticking up. And if you do want to sort of just tidy the edges up, here's another little tip. Get yourself a bottle of Tamiya extra thin and then just paint around the edges like that with your Tamiya extra thin. And that will remove any furriness, any filing marks, any sanding marks will be gone. I always do this after I've been doing any sanding or I generally do it on seams and there you can see that that is now quite clean quite a clean edge and everything okay so um, I've got them both done now as you can see both sides I've moved you in a bit because I'm going to show you some close-up stuff um, if I can pick this up without dropping it I think you'll agree it looks a lot better now than with the, uh, the, with the, the solid side walls there um, no doubt Edward will come out with, or Edward should I say, uh, will come out with a photo etch set to um, to make all this. But really, you know, a couple of hours drilling and sanding and stuff, and uh, I think it looks better than you know thin photo etch brass anyway. That's so, that done there, done. Um, oh, and you can see that I've gone over with some extra thin. It's a little tip for you. Uh, if you do a lot of sanding or like where you're doing seam removal, like on these undercarriage legs, if you uh, if you paint some Tamiya extra thin over where you've sanded, um, it kind of hides up any any sort of joints that are there or anything, and also gets rid of the sanding marks. I now need to look at the um, undercarriage legs. I think this here where that that beam was that I've removed. I think that should be two rods rather than a solid lump of plastic. So I might see if I can drill that out and you know improve its uh, looks a bit. But then I don't really want to weaken it too much. Um, so we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, all in all, you know the undercarriage legs are, are, are quite pretty. Um, I believe the dam busters had uprated gear. So I'm going to have to look into that and maybe make some changes. We'll see. Um, probably the upper mounts here that would have been upgraded we'll see but uh, if I need to make some changes I will um, the tire uh, I've, I've rubbed the seam out I'm gonna paint some mr. surfacer on there and give it a couple of um, a couple of days to dry because I don't end up with a ghost seam there and um, the bottom needs to be flat spotted although you get this this bulge in the kit the bottom is still round so um, that's, that's not very realistic if it's still on tarmac so all I've done is with my big wide sanding stick, just got like that, held the wheel at 90 degrees and just rubbed across and just just like that, just to put the the, the flat spot on there. Uh, take your time, get it right. At the end of the day, once the model's built, um, there's nothing to stop you just gently getting some fine emery and just dragging the, the undercarriage across it when the actual model's built without breaking the legs and stuff. And that'll guarantee your flat spots are then directly flat as the model sits. So um, the other thing, of course, you could do is like, place the model on a table, sheet of fine emery, just just take the weight off the wheels and then just drag the emery underneath the wheel while it's stood on there. Um, that'll guarantee you a nice flat spot, which would be flat in both planes, both both that way and that way. You notice the wheel's got a, a D-shaped key in here so that the wheel is keyed. I'm not really sure that's necessary. Um, you may want to cut that out, get rid of it. It's basically what they've done. They've got the and the, the, the spindle here has got a flat on it. That flat engages in the wheel. And then the sort of position, the radial position of the wheel, or the rotational position of the wheel is determined by that. So if they've got it slightly out, and this is the ground, if they've got it slightly out, you might end up with your wheel sort of sitting like that you know um, or like that 
So, yeah, I might want to cut that out so that the wheel can find its own centre. Okay, so as I was saying earlier about these, um, this area here on the undercarriage leg, so I'm supporting this book and stopping it from closing up. Um, this area here is moulded as a solid lump, but you can see, if I hold the kit part there, you can see in this drawing that um, that actually it's uh, you, know, you can see that it's different. You can see, what I'll do is I'll try and zoom in here. Um, you can see that uh, we've got the the locking mechanism bit sticking up here, which is there. Or, yeah, you can see it there. And then we've got the the two arms here, which are represented here. And we've got the two arms down there, which are represented here. And that's just represented as one solid lump. Um, A, because that link was in there, and B, because of moulding restrictions. Um, so what I've done, I've actually modified this one. So there's the original kit part there. Um, and what I've done is modified it just by drilling through and cutting and carving and getting the, getting the rough shape in there. And you can see that just looks a lot better overall. Um, try and get the focus in there. And you can see it looks a lot better overall. It looks a lot more to scale. Um, I don't think it's affected the strength because the strength will be in mainly in this link here. And then this the passing of this one is supporting the middle of that one. Well, it's still supporting the middle of that one. That's really doing nothing. So um, I'm sort of quite glad I've done that. And I think it looks, I mean, you have to agree when you look at it on that angle, you know, it looks so much better. Um, and I think really will will look so much better on the completed model. Um, so there we go, guys. I'm going to call it a day there. Um, so we've got rid of ejector pin marks. We filled some ejector pin marks. We've cut out these holes in these uh, in these ribs. We've done the tire and flatted the bottom. It's all right. I should have um, come back out. Yeah. So we've uh, we've done the tire. We've flatted the bottom, <clears throat> and we've modified the uh, the undercarriage legs. Have another quick look at that. It looks so much better, doesn't it? I hope you agree. So thanks for watching. Um, if you got the kit. Give all this a go. It's uh, it's not difficult. With this with this here, all you do is drill down. If I can find a pen, all I've done is drilled through four holes like I've marked out there, and then cut away with the knife, and then go in behind and cut that back bit out. It's um it's not difficult. So um anyway, have fun guys. Happy modelling, and I'll see you all soon.